Okay, so we've got two models here uh, of one object two ways up scanned with photogrammetry. I'm going to pull in one of those and that's the object the right way up so I'm just going to call it up for clarity and I'm going to import the other one which is the fossil on its back upside down so I'm just going to rename that down and that'll just help me tell which mesh is met which as we go through. So you can see they're in the same 3D world space. Coincidentally, they happen to be about the same size. The first thing I need to do is get rid of all that crap. So I've made down invisible. And I'm going to use the scissors tool here. And I'm just going to cut out the part of the scan that we want to keep. And I can be pretty brutal with this. We can lose quite a lot of stuff that we know is represented by the other scan. Uh, if we zoom in at the front here, you can see there is a little bit more that needs taking off. Uh, those white parts, that's where the turntable is kind of blended into the front of the fossil, so we'll just delete that too. There we go. Okay, so all that's left is the fossil, the bit we're interested in. Let's hide that and make down visible. We need to do the same thing again, we're just keeping the fossil so once more, I'll align it so I can take the turntable out in one go. And we use the scissors tool to pretty brutally cut the fossil out. I'm losing all that top stuff. It's too in shadow. It's not reconstructed well. There we go. Uh, in fact, there's still holes in there. So I really want to get rid of that. It's, it's not good. There we go. Let's use the scissor tool again. And we're just going to take off that top part that has a hole in. Lovely. There is still a little spike in there. Some errant polygons have made a break for freedom. Uh, I don't think there's really any tools to get rid of those quickly. I don't want to detract from our main point here, which is to align the meshes. Uh, that's fine. We don't need to get rid of that. So here's our two meshes. The first thing we want to do is we want to move them using the translate and rotate tool here. Uh, I'm going to move this one over to the side. So they're both oriented roughly in the same direction so that I can see the analogous points on each. And there we go. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pick points that are the same on both models. And so we need to be able to see both models clearly. Shift select both meshes there and then use align meshes. Pick a mesh to act as a reference. It doesn't really matter here. Click OK. All right. So we're going to zoom in and we're going to find points the same on both meshes. So here at the back and there. I click first on one model, then on the other to label the corresponding points. The texture is really useful here to identify landmarks and things. If you've got a high enough resolution mesh, you can use the mesh directly, but the texture is pretty useful here. There we go. So we'll work around to the front and there's features that are clearly the same. We're just going to match those up. It doesn't matter which order you click on the models. You'll see sometimes I'm putting the point first on the up model. Sometimes I'm putting the point first on the down model. Let's just fill out these front corners. You only need a, min a minimum of three points to do this, but really more points gives you more robustness to the alignment. Uh, so I'm just filling out sort of all the edges of the, the trailer bike. So there we go. And you can see the dark patch there. And we've got a crack there that we can link up. And at the back here, we've got some fairly obvious markings that are the same. There we go. So adjust scale is enabled, hit a line, and there we go. The models have been moved to pretty much the correct position. we we'll get some stats there when we click the tick. So that's nice. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Let's select both of them and now we'll do a fine alignment. Again, pick whichever one you want to stay still and which one you want to move. And importantly, we need to change how much we expect the meshes to overlap when they're aligned. I've put 30%, about a third. All right, click OK, and there we go. Now the meshes are very finely aligned, and you can see if we zoom in, one mesh kind of blends into the other one. That's really nice. We've got a whole object now. 
Uh, at this stage, I recommend saving out each mesh as an OBJ, and that'll save all the transformations and everything. And we'll need that later if we want to recreate textures. Uh, but for now, what I want to do is create a single mesh. So select them both and hit Merge, and that'll create a new mesh in the tree. We'll turn off the old ones. And that new mesh is simply a new object that consists of both previous ones. But it's not a watertight mesh. If we enable the wireframe, you can hopefully see there we've got some big triangles overlapping with some small triangles. It's not a single mesh, even though it's a single object. So I select the vertices. There we go. And then we need to give them normals. They didn't come out with normals before. That's just edit normals compute. The object isn't a plane, so we triangulate them. That takes a second. There we go. Now our, normals have, now our vertices have normals, we can go to Plugins, Poisson Recon. I'm going to leave this at 8. Higher numbers get you more detail, but take longer. And there we go. I'll turn the vertices off, visible. We have a new object, and it's a single mesh. That's key. If we view the wireframe here, you'll see that wireframe is nice and regular and watertight. So we've created a single object here that has all the detail of both scans. You can play around with settings. Uh, changing the octree depth, for instance, will get you more detail, but maybe more noise and take longer. 